you don't remember r slash place, it was an April Fool's joke by Reddit. Basically, all the users on the site can place one pixel every five minutes, and together communities were able to make huge art pieces. Now, what would happen if one streamer tried to run it? Alright chat, the link is here, it's ready to go. This is our forward slash place just for us. We're doing a tester today so we can run it out fully in a week or two. And from this, I'm hoping to make our new YouTube banner. Did you see anything wrong with this clip? Because I sure did. He announced the site ahead of time. With one week until the site came out, in an on-stream stress test where I was able to capture enough data to make a test server of my own, I had enough time to make one hell of a bot. Of course, Ludwig and his developer Otto knew there would be bots, since they were so rampant on Reddit. To combat this, they used Google accounts, which, unlike Reddit accounts, require a phone number to make. Sign in cringe? Uh, no. What do you mean? That's how you stop botters. But one thing they didn't realize is that deterring bots instead of actually preventing them just means that the few people who do make bots will have all the more power since there's no other bots to stop them. Now before I go into the making of the bot, I just want to say, I came into this with no malice for Ludwig or his stream. I saw this as a fun challenge for myself as a developer, and I only wanted it to create, not demolish or get in the way of the content. Simply put, I was there to have fun. And I guess my idea of fun is putting my phone number on blast for hundreds of people. Hello? Hi. Is that Puff? That was a crazy dude. I got hundreds of calls. You got hundreds of calls? Yeah. Did they, did they slow down or are they still coming in a lot? They're slowing down. I, I'm trying to get the calls to stop so I can see if I can find Ludwig. First thing to do before you can make a bot is to make a human. N not in that way. When you load up the site, a live socket connection is made. The user's browser sends the login credentials, the site responds with the state of the canvas, and from there, anything happening on either side is communicated. Right now, all we need to worry about is making it so our bot can handle these packets. Now, after the site closed, Otto revealed that these packets used a compiled binary format generated by a library called Bebop. However, I didn't know this while I was making my bot, and instead of trying to figure it out, I just copied the packet parsing code straight from the site. Because I wrote this bot in JavaScript, I was able to just take the code from the page, and with a few minor adjustments I had a node module, exposing the packet format as though Otto handed me the source code himself. So now we could send and read packets, and using my account token from the site, we were connecting to Mosaic. Now we can write code to draw pixels, right? Oh yeah, the site isn't open yet. Well, thanks to that node module I threw together, I was able to quickly make a crappy debug server. You can draw pixels, and that's all. Now connecting my bot to this dummy server, we can finally write a bot. So basically, we have a file with a transparent template image, and we have the contents of the canvas stored in memory. Basically, to place a pixel, we go over to canvas and see if it matches what the template image says it should be. If it does, great. If not, we add it to a list of possible pixels. Once we have all the pixels that need to be changed, the bot algorithm picks one and tells the server to update it. Easy, right? Now, I ended up being unsure on how to draw the pixels without looking too much like a bot. If I just print it in like this, it's pretty obvious, but if I pick a completely random pixel, it loops back around to how could any group of humans possibly coordinate this. I ended up writing six, count them, six different algorithms, and in the end, instead of settling on one, I made it use one at random. Now this still isn't perfect, but it's good enough that nobody should notice, and what do you know, no one did. So fast forward to the night before the site's supposed to come out, and I've finished all the features I wanted to add. There's a few things on Mosaic that don't feel finished, but it's 11pm and there hasn't been any changes made to the site all week. So I figure the bot is safe and ready for the site's release. And then, Otto goes live. I of course tune in because I've spent the past week working on this bot. You think I'm just gonna let someone change the site under my feet? The stream started off normally, with him working on little things like the stream overlay and the zoom feature and- Okay, so Ludwig wants there to be two different fucking cooldowns. Oh no! Ludwig wants it to be 30 seconds if you have the truffle extension, and 2 minutes and 30 seconds if you do not. Oh! It only takes one person to try to bypass it and then have a hundred Google accounts. Serpy Pluto, thank you for the prime. I appreciate the prime subs. That puts me at 102 subscribers. Everything was falling apart in front of me. All the bot setup I had already done would now have to be reworked to authenticate my accounts with Truffle, Ludwig's streaming extension. I pulled out my most dastardly Serpy tactics trying to convince him to do it in a way that would make it easier for me, but you already heard how that went. By the next day, the Truffle integration was done, and there was half an hour left until the site was going to come out. 
and I had zero truffle accounts, not even my own. To make matters worse, I wasn't even home, so I got started on that right as the stream started. This is your YouTube channel, and this is how you prove it. Let's begin our forward slash place. Go! So the site opens up, and my original plan of reserving a bunch of space into start is thrown out the window. But Ludwig, everything is going mostly good. Bro, come on. Why are we making a Kirby with a cock, dude? Is it bouncing like a f like one of those screen things where you're watching the DVD logo? It bounces? It bounces. After making truffle accounts until I was exhausted, I was halfway through the Google accounts I had made. I threw the bot on with my first template, the head of my cookie run OC, whipped coffee cookie, who was also the mascot of my website, Comic Studio. I chose to start there so I could claim ignorance if I got accused of anything too early, since I actually got my Discord to help make this. So you can't say it was just bots. Shut up. It took hours for the bots to get a handle on it, but eventually we had an outline. Once that's down, nobody really wants to build over you, so it's just a matter of filling it in. And ta-da! My first complete build. At this point, I made as many truffle accounts as I could, and I had the equivalent manpower of 37 people. A far cry from the 100 I originally planned for, but it was enough for some small art pieces. Pretty soon, Ludwig went to sleep for the night, and I figured this would be the best time for a little bit of mischief. I changed Marketing Monday to Marauding Monday, and then to Murdering Monday. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I changed Pornhub, which was already Boob Hub at this point, to fuck bees. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and I even changed mogul moves to mogul moans. Dude, there's a shot that Ludwig is watching this. Why did I- At this point, I'd had my fun, and I went to bed for the night. I originally wanted to pull an all-nighter to make some huge piece to surprise Lud with in the morning, but I honestly didn't have the energy or the canvas space for that matter. Not to mention there was already load on the bots trying to keep whipped coffee safe from our neighbors, who I should mention were literally just the letters LS. To this day, I still don't know who that was or why they were so adamant that their initials stay in front of my thing. Ultimately, it even ended up costing them as the people in my Discord ended up entirely deleting it by the time I woke up. So the next morning comes and Ludwig is back up, as am I. He looks around, discusses for a bit, and then initiates the final canvas expansion. And it's this last one where I really started going off. I decided the best way to both get his attention and avoid my work getting destroyed by others would be with an actual Ludwig reference. Luckily, I already had a remake of the online lore channel icon, and it was way easier to make than with coffee since a blue corner had already formed. That's probably a while till the next expansion if there I is I like one. this loading bar. Did he just not get his own reference? To be fair, he did end up saying something about online lore after, so I imagine he at least subconsciously recognized it. This reminded me instantly of online lore. After I removed it from my template and let everyone else take the wheel, I looked for other communities to help out. Next to the Etika Memorial, I put a set of Joy-Cons, and those ended up mostly surviving to the end. I found some text that said Clint Boyett and changed it to Clint Stevens. And since nobody outside of my circle really knows who Whipped Coffee is, I added a URL to my website where you can see him in all his glory. At this point, I had grown hungry for power. I decided I needed something major, and I had a few ideas on how I'd pull that off. The first attempt was to put some text taunting him on stream. While he was making this Jump King monument, I started changing Changing the Better Call Saul text to say botted LMAO, but I got cold feet. I didn't want to get taken down before I could play all my cards, so I immediately cleared the template, and only one person in chat named BallsDude2 noticed. But I hadn't given up yet. Just because I didn't think I could get away with this didn't mean I couldn't make any splash, and I had one more trick up my sleeve. QR codes. Now, QR codes are one of the more obvious ways to stand out on a place-style canvas, but every QR code up until now on both Reddit and Mosaic were links. But did you know that QR codes can store more than just links? Now, I already had a phone number reserved with the intent of posting it on the site, but when I remembered the option on the generator site, I figured this was worth a shot. So if we make a QR code where the contents are just a phone number, scanning it will open said number on the phone. On Android, it'll give you the option to call, text, or add it to your contacts, but on some apps, especially on iOS, it'll just call the number without asking you for a second opinion. And since Ludwig is an iPhone user, I thought there was a pretty good chance I could get a call with him. After Ludwig's bullet bill animation left a bunch of white pixels, half the work of the QR code was done. All I needed to do was place the black pixels and, okay, ignore my code not being able to tell the difference between blue and black. But once I cleared it up with my main account, the QR code was complete. Now all I had to do was wait.
That was a QR code that called a phone number. Holy shit. <laughs> I didn't even know that was possible. Help! Help me! What the fuck? Shit. I called it and hung up. So probably like 30 people called whoever that number is, and they're gonna have to figure out which one's me. Hello. Hi. Just so you know, there's someone spamming your phone number uh, on the internet. Yeah, that's me. So you're away. Holy shit. Oh my god! My, get my giveaway is that I say, Mushi Moo, whenever I answer the phone. So now I know what you're thinking. Syrupy, did you ever get to call Ludwig back? Well, not really. See, the number I used for this was a Skype number. Within half an hour of the QR code going up, Skype banned the number for making too many calls. A few hours after the stream ended, I talked to Skype support and got the number unbanned, but I still couldn't find Ludwig in the call list. In total, I got 144 calls, but using the chat in the video to figure out what time the call was actually made, only two of the calls in the list could have actually been Ludwig, and adding them on Snapchat revealed that neither of them were. So what the hell happened? Well, just before I made this video, I tried scanning the QR code one more time on my old iPhone, and it was there I found out that sometimes instead of calling, it tries to start FaceTime. Now, I don't know if you can tell by the no SIM message, but I don't use an iPhone, so if Ludwig tried to FaceTime me, I never could have received it. But overall, it still felt like a success since I got the attention, and I didn't really want to make him worry about getting doxxed anyways. After that, I used my bots to write one final message to tell everyone what happened and also preserve this moment in his banner for the next year. Phone number got banned. Sub 2 syrupy. Huh. Well, I guess you have to do it now. Overall, I think I accomplished what I wanted to. I built most of what I wanted to build besides some things that would have been too big without intruding on others' art. I got probably the most eyes or ears on me that I've had in years. And I can say the number one all-time most sub streamer called me, which is cool. If I had to give some advice for what they can fix next year, I think I can give a few tips. Number one, hire me so I can stop it myself. But actually, number two, add more logging, because this could have easily been detected and banned at the start of the site, or even earlier, if Otto could look in the pixel placement logs and see that all the pixels in a certain spot have been placed with Node.js's default user agent in the same IP address. And number three, I'd say adding the email verification for the Lord cooldown, either through Truffle or Mosaic. Now I know this would kind of suck for the users, but they'd only have to wait for one email, whereas someone like me would have to wait for 40. But overall, I think I got what I wanted from this. If you like this content, why not give it a like? Maybe drop a sub like the thing said to. I'm trying to make more fun code videos like this. Right now, my only other video is about Cookie Run, since that's the community I come from, but if you have any other ideas, leave a comment or, you know, contact me directly. For now, I've been Syrupy, and you've been short.